G'day, welcome to Tech Math Channel, I'm Josh. Today we're going to be looking at some of the maths in the movie Good Will Hunting. Uh, it's a movie that came out in 1998 starring Matt Damon as well as the late Robin Williams in what was you know, probably the better performance of his career. He quite rightly got an Academy Award for it. So just a bit of a quick background on this movie. Uh, Will Hunting is played by Matt Damon and he has this genius level IQ for maths, really good at maths, and he chooses to work as a janitor at MIT. And eventually it's discovered that he's this genius and he has to be helped out by Robin Williams in order to uh, recognize his potential, so to speak. But anyway, there's a bit of maths in the movie that I want to have a look at, and a bit of a problem I want to get you solving here. A little bit into the movie, the MIT professor sets his students a challenge. Now, he says this problem is so hard, this challenge is so hard that it's taken a whole bunch of their MIT professors two years to solve. That's how hard it is. Woo, pretty hard, right? So he writes it up on the blackboard in the corridor, and yep, no one can solve it except the Matt Damon genius janitor. So how hard is this problem? Well, we're going to have a bit of a look at it, and I'm going to get you to see if you can solve it. See if it takes you two years like a bunch of MIT professors, or maybe you're going to be a bit smarter than that. So I'm going to give this problem to you in two different ways. First off, I'm going to give it how it is given in the movie. So you can imagine it's got a whole bunch of jargon, big mathy words, sound really smart and scary. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it down into plain English. And you're going to see really quickly this is a problem that you can solve, that you can give a fair go to. So here is the problem as it is given in the movie. Draw all homeomorphically irreducible trees of size n equals 10. That's it. So a lot of big words there, like I said, and you might not understand them straight away, but I'm going to break them down into their little components there. So let's do that. So the first word in that problem I want to have a look at and simplify for you is this one here. What a tree is. And obviously, you probably know what a tree is, but a mathematical tree. Now, a mathematical tree is a diagram or a graph that looks like this. It's a series of dots and lines that basically shows a network here. Uh, you can see it looks a little bit like maybe a bit of a train subway map or something like this. So you're going to be drawing these of n equals 10. This is n equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is n equals 6. You're going to be drawing it of n equals 10. Now, just one thing with a mathematical tree here. This is something that's not allowed here, and that is this particular situation here. You're going to see, say you had something like this here. Okay, we've got this branching, and then it branches like this here, and then it hooks up like that. We have this uh, circuit here that is not allowed with a mathematical tree. So that's the first rule. We're going to be drawing these trees, and this particular situation is not allowed. The second word we're going to be having a look at is this one here homeomorphically. I'm just going to do this by showing you what is meant by this. So say we have this tree once again, where n is equal to 6. Now I'm going to draw a tree that's a little bit different here, which is this one right here. Okay, so it's going to look a little bit like the letter H there. As you can see, that is also n equals 6. Now, these guys are not unique. They are actually quite the same. And I'm going to show you how they are considered to be the same. If you were to get this particular uh, stick and dot here and just move it down a bit and this one you move it down that way and this one you move here and this one you move here, we would end up with that same drawing there. Now these guys are not unique in that way. So what we're looking for is we are looking for unique drawings. You actually just can't draw this one and then draw this one and call it different. They're considered to be the same where we have one connected to two here and one connected to two here, one connected to two here and one connected to two here. They're exactly the same drawing we are looking for unique drawings here. So you got that one there. First off, we have n equals 10. We have the number of dots equals 10. They are these trees without the cycles, and they have to be unique. Okay, to the final condition, the trees have to be irreducible. Now, what does that mean? Well, I'll show you with another example. We're not allowed to have a situation that looks like this here. So nothing like this is allowed to occur. Uh, now, what is this happening here? As you can see, only two lines are going into this dot. One that's going in and one that's going out. This is not allowed. Nothing's really going on and our graphs are not allowed to do that. Our trees are not allowed to do this particular situation here. So there you have it. That problem simplified and I'm going to now read it again with the big mathy jargon words. We are looking for homeomorphically, that is unique, irreducible, we're not allowed to do this, trees of n equals 10. They're going to have 10 dots each. Do you think you can do it? 
Well, according to the movie, it took a whole bunch of MIT professors two years to sort out. But I reckon it'll probably take you around about maybe five, ten minutes or something like this. Or maybe a little bit more. So I'm going to start off two of these just to show you some examples here. So, for example, we could have this particular situation here where we have one, two, three, four, five here. And one, two, three, four, five dots over here. We have n equals ten. Uh, and so far, this is all irreducible and it is unique. So that's one of the examples there. Another example might look a little bit like this, where we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, so this is also n equals 10. And as you can see here, it is different from this one here. So this is another type of diagram. Now, in all, there is 10 of these diagrams that you have to draw, 10 unique diagrams that you have to draw. So pause the video and see if you can draw all 10 solutions for this, uh, all 10 homeomorphically irreducible trees of n equals 10. And I'm gonna be back in just a moment with the answer. What's more, I'm gonna show you the logic of how you can show that these are the only particular answers. Give us a go, off you go. Okay, so did you give that a go? And if you did, did you manage to get all 10? Well, let me know in the comments how you went. How many did you get? As well, did it also take you two years like those MIT professors, or did you get it much, much faster? Let me know, because now I'm gonna go through the solution here. So before we do that, I'm just gonna show you my rationale for working this out, which is the easiest way to work this out and prove that these are the only answers here. I'm gonna do this first off by showing you some different rules that we have to follow when we construct our diagrams. And once we get those, it's nice and simple. So what I'm gonna do is I have two diagrams here and I'm going to break them down into numbers. I'm gonna break them where they remain irreducible. So we have this sort of thing here where I break them along the horizontal. We have one, two, three, four, uh, nodes or dots in here. We have one, two, three of them in here, and we have one, two, three of them in here. So this particular diagram here, I break it down into the uh, nodes that we are, where we keep them uh, irreducible. We have this one here and this one here. We have five and five. So the rules that we have to follow when we draw our diagrams, that everything has to be homeomorphically irreducible, also give rise to a few rules that these numbers have to follow. And these are the following rules that we can derive from those. So first off, if we consider the ends, the actual ends of our diagrams here. So this is a middle and these are the ends. And these are two ends here. Now, it wants to draw an end here that we're not allowed to have. Something that looks like this here. Now this is a situation that we're not allowed to have. So first off, we can't break it down into just one. So we can't have a one on the end here, so we can't have one. So there's no one, but also we can't have this as a grouping where we have two, because two will just then come out and be only, you know, a situation like this where it becomes one. So there's no one and there's no two. So these ends are not allowed to have a one or a two there. That's the very first situation, the very first rule that we have to stick to. Now we consider the middle. Well, what numbers can we have for those? Well. We're not allowed to have this situation where you do this, okay? So we're coming in, and this is our middle here, and we're not allowed to have this particular situation here. This is the only situation we're not allowed to have. And as you can see, that's just one in the middle there. So we're not allowed to have a one, but we are allowed to have a two. A two would give us a situation like this, and we are allowed to have that. So in the middle, we're only not allowed to have a one. And there's also a third rule that we have to stick to, which is this one here. We also can end up with a situation that looks like this here, where we end up with, uh, say we have something like this, where we have this diagram and it's looking like this, it goes out like this, and we have one, two, three, four in the middle. So we have one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three in the middle here. Just notice, if we have four or above here, we can actually rearrange this, okay? So something like this could be rearranged to something like this here. And this is just something to watch out for, uh, where we have, say, something like one, two, three, four, like that, and one, two, three. So as you can see, this middle part here has been rearranged to this. So if any reason for any number in the middle where it's equal to four or above, you can actually rearrange it. So just watch out for that and you'll be fine. So 
it can be rearranged further into a unique tree. So we just follow these rules here. We can go through and we can get all the solutions. So let's do that. So as long as we follow these three rules, we should be able to get all of our answers here. Those rules, once again, the ends are not going to be a one or a two. They're not allowed to be. The middle's not allowed to be a one, but it can be a two. And any middle number four or greater can be rearranged. And so we're just going to have to look out for that. So let's go through and draw these. Now, I'm going to work these out just using numbers, but at the same time, I'll show the drawings that give rise to these. So first off, we're going to start with, we know that this is equal to n equals 10. So we're going to be looking for all these numbers adding up to a 10 there. So first off, we could have where we just have a diagram with 10. Okay, and it would look like this. Yeah, where we have a dot in the middle with nine dots coming out of it like that. So the next diagram we could do is where we had two horizontals. So the first one we could do, the simplest one, is a five and a five, and it would look like this. There you go. We have five on one side and five on the other. Now we just change this around a little bit. We're looking for two numbers that add up to 10. We could have uh, four and six, and that would look like this. So there we have it, four and six, which looks like this here. Uh, we could also have three and seven. Uh, that adds up to 10, so let's draw that as well. Now, the other ones we could also obviously have is we could have, we have a 4 and a 6. We could have a 6 and a 4, but that's just going to be this diagram here, which has been rotated. The same goes for a 7 and a 3. We're not allowed to have that either because it's this diagram just rotated. Uh, we can't have an 8 and a 2 because this fails, this rule here, the ends are not allowed to be a 2. Same way that we can't have a 2 or 8. In the same way, we can't have a 9 and a 1 or a 1 and a 9. These diagrams, not allowed. So now let's get to where we have them three long. So when we're drawing them three long, we're not allowed to have an end of 1 or 2, but we could have an end of 3. So starting with this, we could have a 3 hooked up to a 3 hooked up to a 4. And it would look like this. The next one we could have is a 3 hooked up to a 4 hooked up to a three. It's going to be different from this one, and it would look like this. Now, just a little bit further from this three, four, three, if we look at this third rule here, any mid that's four or greater can be rearranged. Now, the middle here is four or greater, so this can be rearranged, and it would look like this. So that's a rearrangement of the 343 three set up there. Now we can't rearrange this any further because then we'd be failing these rules here. So that's the only one that's possible there. So the next number we could have is we could have a three and it could be hooked up now to a five and a two, but this fails this first rule here. We're not allowed to have a one or a two on the end, so we can't do that one there. We're now gonna move on to having four at the start. Now four at the start here, we could start with a four, and then what we could do is we could have a two. A four can hooked up to a two as long as we don't have a one in the middle. And we could have a four on the end. And it would look like this. Next, if we consider a four going to a three, well, we'd end up with a three, but this would be just the mirror image of this one here. So we're not going to do that one. It's not allowed. So no more fours, what we can do is we can have one with a five. We could start with a five. Now we can't have a one in the middle here because this fails the second rule, but we can have a two and then a three. And it would look like this. Uh, continue on from the five. We can't have a five, a three and a two because it fails this rule here. So there's no more with the fives. In fact, there's no more that are three long because six would give us a two and a two, um, or it would fail all these rules here. So these are the only ones that we can have that are three long. So finally, this leaves us one diagram, which is four long, which is this one right here. We can have a three, we can hook up to a two, a two and a three. Now that's the only combination that's allowable if n equals 10. So they are the only 10 answers that we have here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. No more can be done because any other number combination doesn't fulfill those rules that we have established, the rules that we got from the initial uh, description that it has to be homeomorphically irreducible trees of size n equals 10. And that's the solution to the problem for goodwill hunting. Now, 
did it take me as long as the Matt Damon character? I don't know. I don't know whether I'm the Matt Damon character. I'm possibly a little bit better looking, but I don't know. Did you end up smarter than a whole bunch of MIT professors uh, over two years? Let me know in the comments once again. So, as usual, a big shout out to my subscribers and patrons, and you, if you're still watching at the moment, thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you next time. Bye.